Okay, let's introduce something magical, everybody. Magical, what is it? Well, it's called a heat engine. What does it do? Well, it converts heat to work. It's, it's that simple. <laughs> now, this is a cool thing. For any case, work can be turned into heat. That's just going to happen. Electrical work, easy. If I turn on a fan, it will turn it into heat. However, the reverse is not always true. Just adding heat to something will not cause it to do work. So we have to have specialized systems, specialized heat engines that do this. Okay, so what's the basics of a heat engine? Well, they receive heat from somewhere. Solar energy, oil furnace, nuclear reactor. They convert part of this heat to work. Usually they get something to spin. How? They boil water. The boiling water hits a turbine, the turbine spins, produces power. And then finally, we get rid of any remaining energy into a sink. So heat comes in from a source, gets turned into power, and then goes to a sink. How? That's a question for thermodynamics too. We'll go into all kinds of examples of different types of cycles and engines and how heat produces power in those. For now, you can just look at them as a magical gray sphere. You're like, that's red. I know I'm using a red pen right now, but and all you have to do is say, okay, well, if I have heat go in, beautiful handwriting right now, I have heat come out, and I have work that's been produced. So that's it. That'll be a good enough picture for most of the things we're doing. Oh, and also they operate in a cycle. Okay, so here's that temp um, diagram I was showing you just a moment ago. I have heat come in from a source, I have heat go out, and part of that heat is transformed into work. If you're wondering why do we reject some heat? Why doesn't all of it go into the engine to make work? It's because I can't use all of it. Why? We'll talk about that eventually, but just nothing is perfectly efficient. Okay, so the next thing to think about is that those heat engines, all of them are using something called a working fluid. So in your car, that working fluid is air. Air is being compressed, air is being heated by combusting fuel, air, the air is an expanding, turning your pistons, moving the car around, and then causing your car to move. And then it's exhausted atmosphere, and it pulls more air in. It keeps on doing that again and again and again in a cycle. In your refrigerator, that's Freon. Um, in a nuclear reactor, that's water. So there's always a working fluid. And the best thing to think about is that, yes, you have this heat engine, but your system, your system itself, is just the working fluid, okay? That's the working fluid. Stuff is happening to it, but it's just the working fluid that is actually being worked on, doing work, and having heat go into it and out of it. Because remember, heat happens at boundaries, so it's always happening at the boundary of the working fluid. Okay, so here is a basic heat engine. We're looking inside one right now. So this is a steam power plant. The working fluid is obviously water. So we have heat go in through the boiler. Where does that heat come from? It could be lots of places. It could be geothermal. Maybe you're next to some really hot hot springs or lava. There are places. It could be combustion. It could be solar energy has been um, focused on it. Either way, this takes liquid water and it vaporizes it. So now it's a gas. So once it's a gas, it will go into the turbine. So in the turbine, it expands. Because it is expanding, that means that its pressure is dropping. Because its pressure is dropping, it will begin to liquefy. So now it's a mixture right here. It's a mixture of gas and liquid. And when it does that, it loses enthalpy, and so it produces some work. That mixture goes into a condenser, and it turns it back completely into a liquid. The condenser is removing energy. How does it do that? I can do it in various ways. It might have cold water going next to the hot water. And so the cold water takes the energy away. It could be just air. Lots of things can be doing that. And finally, that liquid goes into the pump and gets pressurized back to where it needs to be. As a note, turbines only work with gases. Pumps usually only work with liquids. And they only like to do it with one phase. So that is the reason that we have one for each. We don't have like a compressor and a turbine here. We have a pump because we're working with liquids. So this is one of our cycles that we'll learn about in Thermo 2. But for now, you don't have to worry about it too much. For now, remember that heat engine is just a nice little ball that says HE on it because that's your heat engine. 
and you can deal with it that way. All of our problems can be solved looking at it like that. Okay, let's go to the next one here. So one thing you could see in that previous diagram is that I had a pump, and that pump requires power. So with any cycle that's producing power, what you want to have happen is that your work output has enough that you can use some of that work output to go back in and actually produce or keep the cycle going. This is especially important if you're in a plane or something. So if I'm in a jet engine, you know, here's my jet fighter, you know, beautiful picture here. Its engine looks kind of like this. It has a compressor, it has a combustor, it has a turbine. The compressor pulls the air in and compresses it. Combustor increases its temperature and then the turbine produces power. But that compressor requires work input. If my work output is not greater than my work input, this doesn't work and I fall out of the sky. So if I want to stay in the sky, I have to make sure that I'm always producing enough power to keep my cycle going. I have to have that power to keep my cycle going. And we're not trying to trick you. These problems are not like, aha, we didn't have enough power to keep this going. It's just something that you have to think about in real life. Okay. Last little detail here is thermal efficiency. And we're gonna do an example with this. So for a heat engine, the big thing we're gonna care about here is thermal efficiency. So what is that? Well, the best way to think about it is simply how much heat did I put in? And then what is my net work output, okay? How much heat went in and then how much net work was produced. This will always work for thermal efficiency every single time. Now we can develop other equations for it, but if you put it this way in your mind and you just work through the steps yourself, you'll always get it right. How much work was produced? How much heat did it take to do that? So this is only ever going to be a fraction. It will always, always be less than one because we can never be perfectly efficient and we can never be over efficient. We can never actually produce more energy than we put into it. That breaks the laws of physics. If you manage to do that, let me know because you won the Nobel Prize. And so we can learn a lot of things here. First off, this runs on a cycle. Since it runs on a cycle, that means that my change in energy, energy in my system is equal to zero. The energy in the system stays the same constantly. And so that means that my net work is equal to my net heat. And so from that, I can work out this equation. If I know it, I can just put in my net work output over my heat input, or there's various other ways we can write this. It's equal to one minus my heat output over my heat input, or one minus the heat from the low temperature source over the heat from the high temperature source. These are all available to you and they all work well. The one I always default to though is this one because I can develop everything else from that one cycle. So finally, last thing we're gonna be talking about here, looking over at this example, how efficient is this system? Well, Let's see here, it's 55, oh, one too far. 55 megajoules right here, and 100 megajoules right here. So my efficiency is my network output over my heat input. So that would be equals to 55 over 100, which would say that I'm 55% efficient. That's it. And with that, we have it and we're done. So thank you so much. Next time we'll do an example using efficiency. Bye-bye.